Overthinking. Don't overthink things, because let me tell you, it will only rob your experience of happiness and peace in the moment. Instead, I would encourage you to focus on doing and thinking about the things that bring a sense of happiness, joy and peace into your life. Have you ever caught yourself thinking about something so much that you end up losing yourself in the moment and in some cases your head actually begins to hurt and cause you stress? The interesting thing is you're either thinking about something that has already occurred in the past or something you're worried may occur in the future. Yet both the past and the future really have no bearing on our here and now. That's unless we allow them to. You see, one has already happened, the past, so you've already experienced it. And the other, the future, well it may or may not even play out the way you think it will. When an experience is unknown, such as the future, it makes no sense thinking of the worst case scenario, as this doesn't serve us in any way. Especially because essentially what we're doing is making up our own outcome based on what we think or believe may happen without no credibility or authority in predicting the future. What if, whenever you found yourself feeling anxious or simply overthinking, you imagine pushing a stop button and then you evaluate what is really going on? What if you then changed your thinking and shifted your focus? Instead of letting your mind wander and ponder, on what's already gone wrong in the past or what may go wrong in the future, you ask yourself a simple question. What is going good for me in my life right now? Even if you're going through the toughest of times and thinking there's nothing going good for me right now, then trick the mind to search harder and ask a different question, such as what could I be grateful for in my life right now if I really wanted to? You see, you'll soon discover there's always something to be grateful for. But just think how different your outlook on life would be if you were to do this on a consistent basis and how much better you would be in dealing with potential challenges that arise in the future. You see, there is unlimited potential in the mind and in our imagination. Every single breakthrough we see in life was first depicted in the mind before acted upon. Our mind is the driving force behind how we think, feel and act. As Andrew Carnegie, the great Scottish American industrialist and philanthropist once said, any idea that is held in the mind, that is emphasized, that is either feared or revered, shall begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. Any idea that is held in the mind, that is emphasized, that is either feared or revered, shall begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient an appropriate form available. We don't always need to know how something works to know that it works. Take the light switch for example. We all know when we push it the light turns on or off. But most people don't know how it works. But they trust that it does. And it does. And it's no different when it comes to the mind and our thoughts. Once the mind is focused on a particular thought at the exclusion of all other distractions, it will automatically instruct the conscious self to do what is necessary to bring that same thought in harmony with the subconscious mind and then into fruition. We can literally think ourselves into bliss, happiness or misery for that matter, and in some cases unfortunately death. An addict that continues to suffer has put themselves in that place simply because of how they choose to think. I say put themselves because we choose how we think. No one can force someone to think a certain way. We can manipulate, persuade, encourage, even intimidate, but we can never force a person to think a certain way. That's a choice we have all been blessed with. Take my own personal experience for example. I was once addicted to drugs and I was stuck in my own reality because of how I was thinking at the time. It wasn't until I managed to change my thinking on both an intellectual and emotional level, or shall I say when I really started to believe my new way of thinking and being, was I able to quit taking drugs and beat my addiction. Without realising at the time, I was conditioning my mind to think differently, and through this process, alongside changing my behaviour, I was able to eventually quit taking drugs and no longer identify myself as a drug user. Sustained happiness must come from how we think first. However, just thinking it alone isn't enough if we want change to be permanent. 
We can think happy thoughts all day long, but if we fail to internalize these thoughts and act as if it's already done in our behavior, then it will just remain just a thought. No matter how much we try, the changes made won't last because we don't really believe it to be true and there's no coherency with our thoughts, beliefs and actions. We only know it on an intellectual level, but we don't feel it or believe it because we haven't changed on a subconscious level. Therefore, we will soon revert back to thinking and behaving in a way that our subconscious self is familiar and comfortable with. So we must create harmony on three levels, thought, feeling and actions. On both the conscious and the subconscious level for change to become permanent. As Joseph McClendon Ferd said, As you think, so you feel. As you feel, so you do. And as you do, so you have. We must consciously think about and do what makes us happy and then internalize these feelings so we're really experiencing it as though it was happening for us right now, in the moment. Yes, we know it's in the mind, but it's the same mind that we dream with, and in our dreams it feels so real. There is no limit to what the mind can conceive and believe. So then we marry our thoughts with our actions, and we create magic. You see, it doesn't matter how big or small the action you take is, or how much of it you do. What matters most is that you get into the habit of actually doing it, not just talking about it. Someday I'm going to do this or that, or I'd really love to do that, but just do it, or at least do something similar that will equally bring joy to your life. Like I said, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be as simple as remembering to smile every day, to remind yourself of how grateful you are for all that you have, or every so often taking some time out to recenter your thoughts. Especially in this day and age where the majority of us live life at such a fast pace and are exposed to so much negative distractions. It's important not to allow your mind to get caught up in overthinking to the extent that you start to believe a big lie. Yes, a big lie, because that's what it is. It's all a big lie. Because when you overthink, the thoughts start to appear real and affect how you feel. However, what you're really doing is magnifying what actually isn't true. You're magnifying a lie. Jim Rohn, one of the pioneers in the self-development world, talks about mysteries of life. These, he says, are the things that we just simply just can't find answers for. For years, people have tried and failed, so they still remain a mystery. There are lots of mysteries in life, but if we were to spend all of our time thinking about how to solve them, we would end up losing our mind, literally. To keep going over and over in your mind about things that you have no control over just robs you of the time you have in the moment. And we must remember that it's our ability to use our time effectively in the moment that will determine the amount of joy and happiness we receive and are able to give to others. You see, we all have the same time in the day, 24 hours, but we just choose to use it differently. Spending time overthinking about something will only result in you going around and around in a loop in your mind, trying to reason with the unreasonable. You can't reason with the past because it's already gone, and you can't reason with the future because it's not here yet. You only have the present to reason with and think on. The present is where you'll find all the answers to any situation you face. Pondering on the past is like pondering on a mystery. You can't solve it. You can't rewind time and do it again differently. Just like you can't predict the future and know exactly how it will turn out. That too is a mystery. We can only control the present and that's where our attention should be. The process of thinking is to benefit us and not to hinder, paralyze or cause us stress so that we are unable to act productively. Thinking in the present either drives us to take action or not but both are equally for our benefit. Thinking in the present doesn't allow room for continuous contemplation and overthinking without coming up with a solution. Thinking in the present deals with that which is presented before us, and this is the only thinking worth entertaining. So the next time you find yourself in deep thought or thinking over something for a length of time that it becomes uncomfortable or stressful, I want you to stop and identify the moment. Ask yourself, how much of what am I thinking about is actually based on what is occurring in the moment right now? Ask yourself, 
How much of it is based on the past that has already gone? Or the future that no one can predict? Then expose a lie for what it is. The reality is it's not true. And you're feeling this way because you've entertained a cycle of overthinking. But now the choice is yours. You can either choose to remain in this loop of overthinking and believing the worst. Or you can change your focus to thinking about what's going good in your life right now. Because this will in turn create a new loop and drive you to think and act in ways that align with this new resourceful way of thinking. Ultimately, the past is gone. So learn from it and leave it there. The future? Well, it's yet to come. So believe it will work in your favour and have faith. Right now, all you have and need is the present. So be grateful you have this moment and use it as the gift that it is.